Hey team, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're gonna tackle recursion in C Sharp. As you can see, all the source code is in my GitHub account, github.com, software nuggets, C Sharp underscore recursion is where all the source code is located. Let us take a look at our first example on learning recursion. Now, the function show is my recursive function. And how you can tell if a function is recursive is somewhere inside of the function, it calls itself. You can see that on line 24. The most important part of this recursive function is line 20. And that's called a stop condition. If that doesn't make sense, it's like, how do we prevent this recursion from happening forever. So we have to somehow have a stop condition. Now, once that stop condition is reached, then we start working with the code that's beneath the actual recursion call. And I want you to think of this whole function, every time we call it, I'm pushing it to a stack, to a call stack. And to simulate that so you can actually see it, I've created a global variable here called steps, and it is a stack of type integer. So what I'd like to do is take us into this app and let's step through this and see how this works. As you can see, I'm gonna initialize i to three, and then I'm gonna be pressing F11 through this program. And now I'm into the function called show, I passed in three, and we're doing our stop condition test. Is num greater than zero? Yes. So as soon as I get into that, notice I'm gonna say push that number to this stack. Now when I execute line 24 and I end up calling itself, it kind of does what the stack operator does, this class object, and it creates another instance of show. So let's hit F11 and notice now my number is two because I said num minus one. I do my stop condition test, and then I push that number to the stack, and notice the stack now has two elements, a two and a three, and then we step through it again. Now my num is one, right, F11, keep working through there. Now I'm at num is zero. That makes my stop condition true. Zero is not greater than zero. So now you'll notice that this will actually come back to this line, but imagine it coming from the bottom up. Now we will continue executing the program on line 26. So I go to the end and notice that I came back. So we are like in our third instance of the show method because like it's on a stack. And then I'm gonna hit, now let's look at one other thing. Notice my num is one. If we look at my stack, what is at the top of my stack? Well, it's one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna pop off that one. So we'll hit F11, F11. And notice I'm at the bottom of the if statement. And F11, now I'm at the bottom of the third instance of this function. And now when I pop that off, hit F11, notice I go back to the line, num is two, and then I'm gonna F11, pop off, two, and now I'm done with that. Let's look at the stack. Notice we have one item less. Now you can see over here in this output window, I pushed one, I mean I popped one, I popped two. Now I'm about to pop that third, pop it. Now our stack is empty, you know, count as zero. And I have my value over here is three, F11. And now I return back to main, and we're done. And that's our first example of a recursive function. Let's take a look at our second example. We're just gonna reverse the string. Notice our input is A, B, C, D. When we get done with this, I would expect D, C, B, A. So here's our input, F10. Now I'm gonna call that reverse function, I'm gonna hit F11. Then the first thing I do is I test my stop condition. Remember, all recursive functions have to have a stop condition. So F10. Now, I want you to think of this from line 27 to line 47, and I want you to think of that as a stack frame. So every time I call this, notice this recursive, so that's calling. Every time I call this, imagine it doing a stack and then a push. And it pushes this entire method, this function, onto a stack. So all of these variables will be available to us 
when we pop them off. That's very important to understand. Now notice here, I'm just going to have an S and that is going to go get me the last character. So that's D. Then notice here, I'm going to go get the substring of that and I'm just going to get everything other than that D. And now we have S, which is D. We have S2, which is ABC. And notice I'm going to call this function again with this ABC. Now remember, think of this as a stack frame. Now F11. Now imagine I just did a push into some kind of stack and now I'm on a new instance. So I come down and I say, okay, what is my input now? Well, it's ABC. F10. Is the length zero? No. Go get the last character. Go get the substring. Let's see what we got. So C and our substring is AB. Notice I'm going to be making another stack frame call with just A and B. So hit F11. Notice I'm stack. I just pushed another whole instance of this function onto the stack frame. And then we're going to hit F11, come through here again. Now what do we get for this stack? We got B and A. Hit F11, and then where are we at? So on this call, we have A and empty. So here, when I call this function again with a new stack frame, I'm passing in empty string. You'll notice here on line 30, if the string length is zero, return empty. So return empty, think of this as doing a pop on our function, on our stack. Ready? F11. Now I'm in there. F11. F11. So now I'm going to return. We popped off a previous state from the stack frame. Now we will just continue that function frame. Notice the value X got empty string, but S has the value A. And you can see that right here. Remember, I told you earlier that think of this as a stack entry, and this is an object. So all of these variables get pushed into the stack. Now I have A plus, you know, empty string. So that's just A. Now hit F11. Now watch this right here. I'm back on this line. So that means I just did stack dot pop. So notice now my S is B. As you can see, S equals B and X equals A. So let's return that. Now I just popped another stack entry. What is that? Well, that's going to be C. This is A, B. I think you see how it works now. Hit F11. So S equals C and X equals B, A. And I'm going to put those together and that will be C, B, A. Hit F11. And you just see what happened there. We're at D. We're at A, B, C. X is at CBA and so that's going to be D plus CBA and we just reversed our string. Hit F11. We return to the calling function and if you look over here, there's our answer. Here we go with the third example. Now what should you know by now? Well, when we're doing a recursive function, we always have a stop condition. That's one thing that you should know. That's the primary thing. Without this, these run forever. Secondly, that we're talking about frame stacks. Now, if you understand what a stack is in general, you know there's push, you know, to add one to a stack and then pop to remove one. So pretty much this, when it, we're doing this recursively, this becomes a frame stack. So every time I do the recursive call, you know, have a function call itself, that actually adds one to the frame stack. And sometimes we do this many times. And then at the very end, when we get to the stop condition, and only when you get to the stop condition, do we start popping them off. And after we pop off, we finish the rest of the program. So in this third example, we're going to take a number like 18, and we're going to convert that to what it would look like in binary, but assign it to an integer. So let's do this. Ready? So 18. Hit F11. So now I, I test the stop condition. Is num 0? No. Num is 18 right now, right? Now look at how we're going to like call it recursively. We're going to take that number and we're going to divide it by 2. And we're just going to work our way down. Ready? F11. So that's 2, 3, 4, 5, Okay, so we just hit the num is zero. 
and that means like we have taken this from 18 all the way down to zero you know just keep dividing it by two now we're going to do a pop off we're going to pop one off and notice that v is zero so num one mod two is one so one plus ten is what that's 11 and then times it by zero and that would be zero so you're starting to see it now so we just have to keep popping them off and at the very end we come up here and we say that the number 18 in binary is 10010. So that's 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. So a 16 plus a 2 is an 18. I think you see it. And that is our third recursive example. There you have it, recursive functions in C-sharp. You learn some important terms and concepts like that stop condition and stack frame. And using this video as an introduction, you now have the basic skills to learn more. I recommend you practice and watch other videos about recursion and then try inventing one on your own. That's all I have team, take care.